Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts. Second part of this message I've been talking about. Faith when you're stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea? Yeah, well this is faith, stubborn faith, you guys. When all hell is starting to break loose on your behind. Listen to this. Now this is just two verses from the same chapter. Hebrews 11, starting at verse 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Oh yeah, Pat got some two cents to add to this. Let me read that again. By faith, he forsook, means he forgot, you know, talk to the hand, I'm gone. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Mm, mm, mm. His faith was in God, not in the threat of the king, not in the threat of the enemy. Okay, listen to this, you guys. When I was in my 30s, early 30s, what ended up happening was I worked for a, as an activities director for an aged home for deaf. And um, I had just started taking sign language and I was on my second class and I wanted to go all four semesters, which I did. And, uh, but in the, in the midst of this, I got a job, which enabled what I was learning to get deeply rooted so I wouldn't so easily forget. And I could learn a lot quicker dealing with the deaf, you know, senior adults. Well, anyway, it was a dream job. It was part-time. I loved it. I loved the people. I even loved my boss. And we all got along like a nice, big, happy family. Well, hmm. one night, the boss asked me into her office. Oh, this material so rough. It's always scratching my neck. Anyway. She asked me into the office, so I figured, okay, we're going to chat a minute, and then I'll get back to work. And she says, um, okay, this is the plan, for, you know, for the Christmas holidays. I'm going to be out of town soon, and, um, and, um, and the cook and his wife, they're going to be, you know, going back to the Philippines. So what I need you to do is we're going to have some, you know, backup help. But what I need you to do, this is out of your job description, and I know that, but I need you to do this for me is really important. You know how we have a lot of people who uh, send donations to help this, this home continue and, you know, well, a lot of those donors, uh, we really want to uh, thank them, and we need you to deliver some gifts for us. I'm like, oh, okay. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> the church I went to was dead set against anything alcohol. So I was taught not to drink it, not to buy it, not to think about it. <laughs> Didn't bother me. I wasn't a drinker anyway. I mean, I was once in a blue moon, if I had a cold, I'd drink a Bloody Mary just to help sweat the cold out. But it wasn't. You know, wasn't something that I, you know, look forward to or uh, icy cold can of beer on a hot summer day. Other than that, no. So it wasn't a big sacrifice for me not to drink at all. And I was still learning obedience big time. So I wasn't going against what my church taught. Well, the boss finally lowered the boom and let me know what I was delivering wine. And I was going to hand deliver these boxes of wine to all these different homes in their activities van. Well, I had to sit back and I'm praying under my breath big time now because I'm trying to be diplomatic, you know. I know she's dependent on me, but she had no idea if I was even going to be there at that point. So I had to tell her that my church taught against anything alcohol. And because of that, I couldn't participate 
in delivering something I don't believe in. For me, it's like delivering weed or, or you know, some type of a, a, a drug, an illegal drug, or, you know. So uh, she was, she sat there quietly, went back to her paperwork. Oh, I'm, I'm scared. I mean, I'm shaking. My knees are shaking. <laughs> I'm I'm praying under my breath of Lord, Lord, you know, let her understand, help her, you know, understand what I mean, you know, because she knew I was a Christian and no bones about that. I took the the seniors to our church and interpreted the service a lot of times, and she came too. Well, mm hmm. She looks up and she says, "Okay." She says, "Now." I know, you know, everything goes well here, but she said, my back is really up against the wall. I really need you to do this. So um, I need you to show up at such and such a time and blah, blah, blah. Thank you. That's all. And with all the authority that she had never shown me before, she looks down at her paperwork and continues to do her work as if to say, dismissed. And I'm sitting there. I'm not leaving. I'm still sitting there in, her, in that chair. <laughs> and I'm praying big time under my breath. Oh, God, help me, help me, because I'm scared. Honestly, I was scared. Yes, I believed in my God. and My faith was there. But I was scared. And I said, um, well, uh, <sighs> have you ever heard of the scripture that says, and she looks up at me as if to say, this conversation is ended. Are you still talking? And I continued to talk as if to say, yeah. So I said, uh, have you ever heard of the scripture that says, if you uh, force somebody to do something that's against their conscience and they sin, you have caused them to commit a sin, whether it is or not, if it's against their conscience, you have caused them to sin, but you have also committed a sin. And then she says, after a long lull of, of uh, deafening silence, she says, Okay, thank you. And then she's back down at her work again. Uh, this story's in my book. That still blows my mind if you want to check it out. But anyway, so I'm sitting there, and uh, I get up, and I'm like, okay, I'm dismissed. Let me get out real quick before she says anything. And I go home, and I'm I'm asking my my ex-husband, you know, my it was, yeah, at the time, you know, pray with me, you know. I don't know what her reactions is, but she seemed quite upset. And we had never had a falling out. I mean, we all got along. When I say we got along, it was like a heaven sent job. Well, here we are Thursday. I head into work. Now, nobody calls me at home. I head into work. Hi, everybody's hi. My boss is hi. Okay. And the next thing I know, my boss comes up to me and she puts her arm around my shoulder. She says, oh, I want to tell you something real quick. She said, you know, we had a board meeting and I really hate to tell you this, but we had to let go of somebody and it was either the cook or you. Well, you know, Pat, I really hate to do this, but I'm going to have to let you go. I got fired for not serving that wine. Fired. Think about that. It looks like I lost. I quietly walked out looking like I had lost. I was like, oh, that's okay. That's I understand. I understood a whole lot more than she knew. I got in my car, drove home. Mm -hmm. Talked to my ex-husband about it. We prayed again. I got up that next day, 
trying to figure out now what am I going to do? It was my off day anyway. And I get a phone call. So I pick up the phone. Pasadena Board of Education. Hello, is this Patricia Love? Yes. Well, we um, have gone through all the applications and we wanted to know if you'd be willing to start on Monday. Start on Monday? I got a job just like that. Um, and um, the hours will be five hours a day, five days a week. Is that all right with you? That's fine. Thank you. I'll be there. What time? <laughs> the job that I was fired from was basically six to ten hours a week. The job that I was hired by was 30 hours a week. So when I tell you that God has your back, when you obey to the point of persecution, baby, for God's sake, oh yeah, he got you. He has got you covered. Now, you stick that in your pipe and smoke it.